Welcome to Level Up and Live, the podcast where we explore the strategies, mindsets, and habits that lead to success in every area of life. I'm your host, Sean Myers, joined by my co-host, Ewan Heinemeyer. And today, we're diving deep into a topic that separates the average from the elite, unreliability. That's right, we're calling out the flakiness that's holding you back from reaching your full potential. Are you tired of missing out on opportunities because you couldn't commit? Sick of letting yourself down and others around you? It's time to make a change. Being elite means showing up consistently, being dependable, and following through on your commitments. So if you're ready to take your life to the next level, hit that subscribe button. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube so you never miss an episode. And don't forget to share this episode with a friend who needs a little extra motivation to kick their flaky habits to the curb. Get ready to level up and live your best life. Let's dive in. The title of this episode is Unreliability. You will never be elite if you're flaky. Yes, you. And if you're watching YouTube, I just flipped my finger around from pointing at Sean to myself, right? Because this is something we all do. We all suffer from it at some point where, or maybe have been more unreliable in the past. All right, think about a time when you committed to something and you didn't do it. And how did you feel? Were you empowered? Did you feel good about yourself? And here's the most important part that I think uh, we're going to talk about today. Being flaky, not showing up, not doing what you said you would do with other people is, is a surefire way to not be empowered, to not have strength in yourself. But the most important person to be reliable with is yourself. If you're reliable with yourself, then you're going to be reliable with other people, right? So when you say to yourself that you're going to be X, you're going to do X, you're going to commit to X to get X result. If you don't follow through on that, you're putting a, uh, a coin in the bank uh, of that you cannot do. You're not a doer. You don't trust yourself. When you don't trust yourself, it's very difficult to get the results that you want. And this is all very subconsciously, right? This is all in the background. So if you ever question yourself, why do I not have the results that I want in life? Why, why am I not where I want to be? Say I'm doing all the right things, but you still don't have what you want. Well, every action you take, every thought that you have, every subconscious thought you have has provided the exact outcome that your life currently is. Whatever situation you're in, if you don't like it, you are the source of that, right? And it does come back down to your trustability, sticking to what you said you would do to yourself, right? Your reliability, self-discipline, your mindset. So I, I got a text from someone uh, a week or two ago, and I trust this person, and it was just a very flaky text, and it really bothered me. I was like, "This is not uh, honorable. This is not. Um, this is not a stand-up thing to do. If you're going to tell me something important or something big um, that's serious, I mean, you call me. If you can't see me face to face, eyeball to eyeball, which is what a man does, a, a strong woman does." Go see that person. If you can have a difficult conversation, if you can't see someone in person, you call them, right? And you have that hard conversation because you're a liable person. You trust yourself enough to be able to have that difficult conversation. And so that happened to me and I was very frustrated. It really bothered me and actually called Sean, which I don't often do. And what he often doesn't do is pick up, which he did. And he coached me through it, calmed me down. It was a really beautiful conversation. I'm really grateful to him for that. I don't normally do that with, with anybody. So it was really a um, powerful moment. And uh, I realized the more I thought about it, I was like, man, where am I doing that? Where am I doing that? I don't do it in these areas, but where am I doing it in other areas? So all that to be said, today we're going to be talking about unreliability, being flaky, why we do it, what we can do about it, right? Because of the results, the outcomes that we've been getting from being that person. And then some ideas on how to hone that skill of being trustworthy, reliable. And there's no other uh, person better to talk about it today, I think, than Sean Myers. So we're going to get into it today. Uh, or someone I trust. It's the man I'm looking at uh, on YouTube here through the, through the screen. Uh, and we're going to be talking today. And I just I trust them through and through. So um, yeah, Sean, I say all that. How's that land for you? Man, reliability, I would say, is probably one of the top three traits, skill sets, whatever you want to call it, when it comes to if you own a business, if you're self-employed, even in sales, right? When I think about it from this standpoint is, am I reliable to myself? Can I show up to the podcast? Can I show up and be reliable for my wife, for my family, for when people need me? I may not have all the answers and I might, and I might not be able to show up all the time, 
but I can be reliable when I say, when I say I'm going to do something, when I say I'm going to commit to something. And then I'm imperfect, just like, just like any human being, right? And sometimes what you don't know is what you don't know. And so, like you said, pointing the finger back at ourselves, right? And what in every occasion, in every situation, in every area of life, where are we, where do we flake out? Where are we unreliable? And I think that just comes down to the self-awareness and mindfulness of understanding of like where we are, where we flake out. And so I know our tip number one here is, is mindset and, and attitude is everything. And that's exactly what we just talked about for the last four minutes is mindset and attitude. Are we being reliable or are we being unreliable in, in these different situations? And so I had a similar situation that, 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 uh, that I, I want to say a story on that, it, that has hit me here recently. And probably for the last like four weeks, I got invited to go do something and that was a pretty big event and it was going to be a Q and a in the, uh, in, in the industry that I'm in one of the industries that I'm in. And I was super excited about it. Well, over these four weeks, I had got the invite and I was like, yes, put it on the calendar. Let's rock and roll, make it happen. Well, over the course of these four weeks, I got text messages, three text messages in a group mass message from one of the leaders in this industry basically saying, hey, the time has changed. We're going to have to push back. We'll let you know when that new time is. Okay, cool. Two or a week goes by. Hey, the time has changed. We still don't have a time yet. We'll let you know. At this point, I'm like, what's going on here? Like, you know, be more, a little bit more transparent. <laughs> and then I got a, an email this week that was completely uh, a curveball. And very, the opposite of transparent, very, very fluff, very against my values and my beliefs. And then this email, it said, you're off the hook, right? Like meaning you, you, you don't have to come to this meeting that's not scheduled yet. And I think this lines up perfectly with what we're talking about. Mm. The feeling that I got of, of unreliability, of flakiness in that scenario of, untransparency about what's going on and why I'm off the hook now to come in mm. for this Q and a with what, whatever happened or whatever went down. It wasn't just one thing, but it was multiple actions from this individual on how mm. the experience was. And it was just very off putting. And I think it really comes down to like what we're talking about is the mindset and, and the attitude of the individual that's putting it out there. Right. And so I really dissected it and it really, the way it made me feel was just uneasy. It was uncomfortable. And I'm like, if I make, if I say I'm going to do something, if, if I say, and I'm going to me, that's a, to a certain degree, that's, that needs to be reliability. If I say I'm going to do something and then I need, and behind the scenes, I need to be transparent about it, right? If something's going on, if something's going on, let's be transparent because if not, it seems flaky to the other person, to the third party they receive it, it lands differently if you're just going to be off-putting, kind of like the text message that you, re that you received. Hey, you need to push whatever it was, right? It was just kind of like, this is flakiness. What's going on here? There's no transparency, you, you know? And so it's all attitude and mindset. Go ahead. You, and, you and think of what, just to hear that, it's the, the same, same story as me. I'm same kind of situation. I'm like that person's standards, it's okay for them to do that, apparently. Right. It's OK for them to do that. They haven't set this standard of for themselves that I need to be um, up front, need to let them know what's going on out of for my own sake. Like if that was me, I need to get in touch. If it was me, let's say and things change because things change. Right. Like something might come up. But if they had called you and said, Sean, this is a situation uh, and there's a reason behind it. And I just yes. want to let you know what's happening there. Yeah. But just a, a whimsical email and not knowing what's going on, that is very flaky, right? Yeah. It's, not, it's not a solid attribute. And to me, I don't know who that person was or what they were, they were doing there, but what must their identity be about themselves, right? And then what are they okay with and why are they okay with it? And play that out. As uh, Clay Worrell said uh, on the podcast that came out this morning, play the tape forward. What happens if you keep being like that? With all the bridges that you're going to burn, you're going to run out of bridges 
or there's enough people to where you might not burn the bridges, but you're never going to have a solid bridge because you built that base with someone. You have to change that identity, your mindset, your attitude that no, it's important. And the reason, you know, one of the main reasons I know why I have done it in the past and while I'll probably continue to do it and hopefully catch it and change the ways on that is there's a fear behind it. They don't want to mm-hmm. confront the issue at hand. Right. So I'll just bail. I'll just, I'll just flake out because it's the easiest path. Yep. And when is the easiest path ever the best path? It's, it's not. not. But if you're a stand-up person and you make that call, it's difficult. Eyeball to eyeball, preferably. You know, this situation, how much respect would you have for that person? Would you want to do more business with them at some point? You might even be, man, this one didn't work out, but I can't wait for the next opportunity because of the way they handled that situation. As opposed to, you'll never want to deal with that person again. It's burned. Yeah. Yeah, because it's just uh, it is big as a pill it may be to swallow right for for both sides possibly and as hard as it may be it's the to me it's the transparent it's the right thing to do if you're going to be a reliable person in the way you show up in the way if because stuff happens right i don't know what happened but i'm feeling the way i'm feeling and that's the feeling of flakiness that's the feeling of somebody being unreliable that's the feel that's the feeling of you know to me, it's it's really it's really an average thinking mm-hmm. on the mindset and attitude, more like along the lines of scarcity mindset, right? Of mm. what this person's going to perceive or what they're going to say because I'm being transparent. And to me, you know, it may work for for other people, but if you're a business owner, entrepreneur, somebody listening to this, and you really want to level up, take your business to the next level with employees, team members, and your family and friends, you've got to have this this. Uh, this mindset and attitude, which leads us to our second one, which is my favorite one, time management. And you're you're the ultimate person to talk about this. Like (laughs) if you could think about, like if you could take us through a a journey of when you, time management wasn't maybe important to you or as important as as it is now. And then when did it become important? What were the results you're getting? And and, because you're like the ultimate person to talk about it. Because you're like, if there's anybody I know, you, you are time, the time management king you know, and you protect it and block it off. And uh, there's no lines that get crossed there. And it's, it's a beautiful thing because it allows you to do what you do. W- what's the journey there for you so people can hear and, and and try and body that? Yeah, so I think it's aligned with your strengths and weaknesses too, right? It's humility. So understanding like your strengths, I understand my strengths, I understand my weaknesses. And I've been really focusing on, on, on improving my weaknesses over the last couple of years. But when I say that is, it falls in line with my strengths. I mean, it just really does. Like one of my strengths is responsibility. One of my, and that aligns with the time management aspect of it. Meaning if I set a deadline, Ewan, I'm going to make it happen. And if I don't, I'll own up to it, right? I'm going to do everything in my power. I'm not going to make an excuse. I'm going to put it in my calendar. I'm going to put it in my phone. I'm going to put it a sticky note on my forehead because I'm, because I'm going to meet this deadline. I'm going to meet this task just like the podcast, every Tuesday rolls out 5 a.m. every Thursday, you know, word copy title. If we don't meet these deadlines, then to the perception of people that, that may be listening or but watching, right, the, from an from a employee or friend or audience or listener standpoint, that's flakiness. Where are these guys? They're unreliable. Mm. Where's the podcast? Yeah, don't trust them, right? And so time management, you better have it together. And if you don't, then it's just a recipe for disaster, right? And so for me, it's like, it allows me to hone in, focus on what it is that I need to do at the task of hand every hour of the day. And so there's things that I struggle with if I spread myself too thin, if I bite off more than I can chew, if I do things that I don't wanna do, right, that aren't aligned with my goals, then yes, I could see how it would be easily uh, perceived as this guy's unreliable because I've just signed up for so many things, right? When I've just honed in and focused in on what it is that I truly want to do on a daily basis, to me, it's just, it's like, it's like a machine. It's like a system. It's like a process. Like it just, it's, it's the reps every single day. Just like if you did a push up every single day, tomorrow's two, tomorrow's three, eventually you're just going to get so damn good at your push ups. 
And so that's the same thing I do with time management is like, okay, four think backwards plan. What's tomorrow look like? What do I need to do in this hour? Okay, from 7.30 to nine, I have podcast studio, nine to 10 business huddle, 10 to 11 lunch, 12 to two cycle, two to three. So everything's broken down and in, you know, things happen. And so I give myself breathing room in that time management. And here's the key ingredient. Because I have time management and I spell everything out and I forward think backwards plate, backwards plan, people look at me as reliable. You've said it yourself. Dude, you're the most reliable person I know. It's because I forward think that backwards plan. Where focus goes, energy flows. It's because I'm being intentional about what each hour of my day is spent and what the deadlines are, what the goals are. And I have people in my life that don't do this. And when they, when they do do it, they're freaking, they level up right? They 2X their money. Customers are happy. And then when they don't do it, it's a recipe for disaster. I get emails. Hey, your employees haven't heard communication from this employee, right? It's because they went against their time management. They went outside of their structure. And so staying consistently year after year after year, right? You become that reliable person. And to me, that's how good brands are built. Think about the podcasts that are rolled out. Think about all these brands. Amazon, Amazon. Think about the two-day delivery, right? Our expectations and our standards are they are reliable. If it's freaking tornadoing outside, a hurricane outside, flooding outside, you're seeing the Amazon. You've seen memes where they're swimming to you. Mm -hmm. To me, right, that is reliability. And and, and if if they can't make it, they communicate it to us. They say, hey, it's going to be delayed. They do. As long as you, but if there's, uh, so you see delay and you're frustrated. Okay, it did, they're not going to make it, but they communicated the bad news. Okay, but what about if they hadn't communicated it and it just says it's still coming? I'd r- way rather know the bad way news. Worse. Oh, it's going to be delayed versus yeah. well, what's going 100%. on. I don't know. That's when I. That's when people start getting upset. Is when they don't. But know why what's don't going they on. communicate? Why? That's our third point, by the way. Why don't they communicate, Ewan? Uh, because they're afraid of. Uh, there's fear. Fear involved of people being upset. We didn't meet the expectation, which means trouble. I'm, I'm now in a weakened position. I said I was going to do something. I didn't. This person has the right, quotation marks, to uh, berate me, to crush me, uh, uh, to scold me. And I don't know if it's a childhood thing or I'm, I'm, that's how we're taught. You don't do this, then you're in trouble. Right. It's very basic. But that's the, that's the fear and, and the monster in our mind is going to it's going to be death, excommunicated, excommunicado, John Wick fans. Um, but that's not true, right? Like that's that's fear. Um, uh, that is the the monster inside the mind, and that's why I was going to say uh, I have ADHD. And I saw I saw a um, a reel the other day on uh, I think it was Instagram, and it was about uh, being late. And this guy's like, "Yeah, I might be uh, late, but I, I you know I have ADHD, and so." I can talk to CEOs on a whim about their intricate problems. I can figure out solutions within 10 minutes of hearing them. I can connect to 10 people in the room at the same time and I can do this, I can do that and all these things. So yeah, I might be late every now and again. And it was like, okay, I, I totally see where he's coming from because I can relate to that. I'm like, yeah, I can do all these things. Being on time is difficult. But then I wanted to push back to that guy. I'm like, but okay, it doesn't mean you get to do that though. If you said you're going to do something, you still need to be able to do it because you're not reliable. Okay, great. You get to do all those amazing things and help people. But if you're not trustworthy, what good is that? Right? So where's the validity of the words you're saying that are true and really useful and helpful? Um, but if you're showing up in areas where you're being flaky, it diminishes who you are and what you're going to be saying. You know. So for me, it might be harder. It might be harder for me, but it's a skill that can be learned. Right? It's a... And if people are going to be late, right? And we're just using that as an example, communicating that it's going to happen before it happens, long before. The the moment you know to stay in integrity, the moment, oh, I'm going to be late. And also you don't just get to continue to communicate that you're going to be late. You say, I'm going to be late today. Going forward, I'm going to do this to make sure that I'm not late. And then that's how you improve. That's that's leveling up right there. Well, that's taking accountability. I make too, right? Leading into our, leading into our, Fourth one, accountability. And you see, the beautiful thing is how all these align and they all run congruent with each other in reliability and unreliability and being flaky. Accountability to me, elite people and average people is 
The difference is the separator is they take true ownership in what you just said. Hey, by the way, I'm a human being, right? Things happen. Things pop up. I get it. I'm not going to justify excuses. Here's here's what I'm going to do moving forward. Because it is hard. It's not easy. Sure. Like, And people, I mean, it's, I've said it in the past, but I, I, I really try to, I, I don't say it anymore. Well, that's just the way I am. Take, take it, take me or, or leave me. You can't, you, you can't, you can't leave it like that because that means that that's the scare, that's the fixed mindset as opposed to the growth mindset. Okay. I am this way. What's the result when I am that way? How can I improve upon it? I'm not changing myself uh, to be something else for someone else. I'm, I'm being a better, I'm working to become a leveled up version of myself. Right. So yeah, I may be that way, but everything is a skill. Everything is a skill and skills have steps, hundreds and thousands of steps little intricate moves that allow you to change over time. And it's the accountability, right? Allowing yourself to continue setting yourself up, your environment, setting that environment up to where you can be held accountable, to where you can create the ruts, right? The ruts are where you your, your wheels get stuck in that, that path. And you if those are stuck in a good direction, that's the direction you keep going. And if you're not good at it at the start, then find a way to be held accountable. If you can't do it internally, find an external version of that. I know for me, if I commit to being somewhere or say I'm going to do something, I do it. It also makes me more cautious of what I agree to do, because I know if I say it, I'm not going to back out, you know, and uh, hopefully you can attest that. Or if I say I'm going to do something, I, I will show up. I always show up. That's, that's in my motto. I don't just not show and say, oh, sorry. You know, it's, and that's a skill I've learned, right? Like I learned that young, like you show up and you, you do the same thing. Yeah. And that's why we no. trust each other, you know? Exactly. I mean, it, it has to be built on that, right? I don't think when, you know, that's a whole nother episode, but when you enter in a, a partnership, right, in business or even your spouse, if there's unreliability, man, there's going to be some huge wake up calls, right? And yes, I can attest to you, to, to you, you know, that I don't think we're, we would be where we are today and all the success that we've had is if we didn't not only trust each other, but also we rely on each other. And so it's important. And before we go to the next point, I want to share something on accountability. Me and Kendra have really been focusing on our marriage and leveling up. And, and so, well, how do you do that? Right. You can't do it alone. You have to do it through, through the Bible, through scripture, through Proverbs, through plugging yourself in a church and not to get off in the weeds, but we've, we've, um, we've just been doing some maintenance, right? Some preventative work and, and, uh, just really improving on our communication. So we do a weekly counseling session and it's a beautiful because, you know, where focus goes, energy flows. So we're just being intentional about it, spirituality and in growing in our marriage. And last two weeks ago, we're on these, this Google meet. And in my mind, I'm like, oh yeah, Google meet, I can plug right in and I can do it in two minutes because I do so many Google meets and Kendra's on 10 minutes before, right? If you're, if you're early, you're on time, you're on time, you're late. And she's like, Hey, you better get on. Cause we just did, we just did separate Google meets. And I was like, oh no, I got this. You know, I do Google Meets all the time. Well, I get into the podcast studio and I go to jump on, I'm having a link error. <laughs> so immediately my heart starts pumping, right? And I'm like, <laughs> anxiety, like here I am, this guy that preaches and teaches all this stuff. I'm going to show up late. And we had to be there right at five o'clock, right? Well, five o'clock hits and it's not five o'clock, it's 5 p.m. You're like, oh, you're almost there. You know, you can, the link, you can feel it. You're almost in. And then sure enough, the link didn't work. I was in the wrong, I was in the wrong link. I was about two minutes late. They sent me the right link. And immediately I said to the guy, I said, Mike, I said, I just want to acknowledge that I'm two minutes late and I'm not going to make any excuses. I didn't say anything about that, what happened. And that's what most people do. That's what average people do is they make excuses. They try to justify. I said, Mike, I'm two minutes late. It's unacceptable. Here's what I'm going to do moving forward. I'm going to be on 10 minutes early moving forward. And you can bet your butt two days ago or whenever we did it last, a day ago, I was on before and he ended up having the hiccup, but I addressed it in that moment. He goes, oh, it's okay. No problem. Right? And so to me, like, Whatever he said, I couldn't control. But what I could control, I did it for myself because I was the one speaking to myself moving forward because I held myself to higher standards in that accountability. And I think that it buys you uh, something more than money can ever buy you or possessions or, or physical 100%. things. It, it buys you when you are that trustworthy person and you do have an issue because it's just it's life. It's human beings, right? Because you are that trustworthy person when you, something does happen, that person knows, oh my goodness, something must have really happened there. And not only that, but he's backed it up with saying that will never happen again that way. 
because yeah. it will happen again in a different way. 100%. But you'll be able to address that. And then you that's because what did you do there? Well, I'm going to be 10 minutes ahead. That is leveling up. Well, now yeah. you just leveled up in your mind. You will never be that person again. You've left him behind. Yep. And uh, and if when it messes up again, for whatever reason, and we don't know what that is, you will address it again. You'll implement something else that would prevent whatever that issue is. And yes. that's you then again leveling up. And it's uh, a, a, a state of accountability, right? And that's a trustworthy, that's the person I want to be around, right? Yes. Like that's a person taking ownership, no excuses. Because yep. man, excuses ultimately makes the victim, makes you a victim. Well, that's because that happened. I had no control. And our victims powerful, you know, I, I, I'll do it myself. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll say, man, it was, um, I missed an exit when we were going to meet at the gym a few weeks back. And I was like, well, it's because... Well, it's not because it is what it is. I was late. Yep. And going forward, I said, Hey, going forward, I'm going to make sure blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. Like that's, that's, that's what we learned at Landmark. You know, I think that's yep. why some of the reasons that really helped us out with that was to think back, um, integrity. Um, but it's never the excuse. It's that what is the result and what are you going to do about it? Exactly, man. And it just, cause it, I mean, surely I'm not the only one. When I start hearing people say excuses, I just want to throw up in my mouth. <laughs> Seriously, I cannot be the only one. I'm like, I don't want to hear it right yeah. now, right? That And that's where I have to pull from my empathy card and compassion card, and I will mm. be, and I'll be very intentional about what, you know, because things could happen, right? Life, traumas, but, okay, cool. That I'm going to be poised, I'm going to be humble, and I'm going to remain in the pocket to hear what they have to say. Yeah. But I'm watching their actions too moving forward. And so that's right. uh, how, do one they, of the how things, do they respond? How do they show up next time? It, Are they exactly. doing it consistently? Because if they did it again and again, oh man, it, it, it's just, this is not, um, play the tape forward. It's not a relationship I'm going to be in for long if that right. keeps happening. Well, and if, 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 if individuals grasp this, this skill set, right, in, in this principle and this fundamental way to live your life, I, and you're listening to this, if you can grasp being reliable in the different areas of life, right, and own up to it and do these key points that we're talking about, you are in the top 5%. Of the population. It's not easy. It's not easy. 95% of the population will not, will, they will be unreliable in most areas of their lives. And if you run a business, if you're an entrepreneur and you've been doing it for 12 months, six months, six years, and you have employees leaving and they're saying blah, blah, blah. And you're saying to them, well, it's because this person was X or that. Because, well, if you're the leader, this is a really important place to check yourself, right? On um, where might you be being flaky that you didn't think about? Because how your employees show up is a direct reflection of the leader. Yes. Right. If they are 100%. not trustworthy, reliable, that person is solid. People want to be around solid people. One thousand percent, you and one thousand percent. So I think yep. if, if you could, man, if you want to know how you're doing, look at your business and your employees. How are they showing yep. up? What is their attitude? What's their demeanor? That's and right. I, I guarantee a, a large portion of it is the the trustworthiness like where are you being flaky at and i think if you could pinpoint that think about how they would then uh change um going forward like maybe they're going to be more hope and i trust that this person is taking me where i want to go like there's a future for me they're going to start showing up different energy different they're going to be more positive right they're going to uh want to level up themselves right so if your employees start doing that your whole business goes up mm. you, know, you don't want to be dragging them you want you want to be lifting them up and they're going to be like climbing to get there themselves, right? So this is such a huge topic for the entrepreneurs, the business owners that we talk to, and and or just any elite high level person that wants to uh, get to that to that place. But then you can attest to that more than probably anybody. Yeah, and I think it really has to, like you said at the very er intro, we have to look at ourselves, right? Yes. Are we being reliable? Or are we being unreliable? And then you know we can't expect the people around us, our team members, our spouses, to be this way if we're not be showing up this way, right? doesn't make sense. Be the role model in it. So, uh, man, we're, we're, we're at, we're about out of time. <laughs> this is one of those episodes that we could just keep going on and on. So maybe we do a two part series. I know there was yeah, three more. It's so key important. Points. Yeah. We'll, we'll do another episode in this cause there's, there's more to yeah. discuss, but this is, this yeah. is an ongoing skill, skill yeah. to learn. That's right. Yeah. And anybody, and anybody can do it, right? You just have to be intentional about it and you have to be proactive about it. You have to play the tape forward. Like you say, like Clay Worrell says, Hang around people who are already that way. Bingo. And how do you hang around people who are already that way? By doing these things, right? Yes. Which I'll go back over right before we end. Mindset and attitude, time management, communication, and accountability. Amen. Amen. Level up and live. 
level up and live. And there you have it for today's episode of the Level Up and Live podcast. If you've enjoyed what you heard, don't forget to subscribe for more weekly inspiration. Follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube for behind the scenes content and updates. And please take a moment to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your preferred platform on what you like about the show. Your feedback means the world to us. Until next time, keep leveling up and living your best life. Level up and live.